will not boot reliably. Sometimes it just bumbles to life, other times it spins fans for a bit and dies. Have to shut off at the power supply to try again. Took it to Geek Squad and they did nothing. Almost 500 bucks on the ticket, my friend has the service package, so it was $150, and they claimed to have cleaned it. That was a lie, it was still dusty inside. They claimed to have fixed Windows, which I also must assume was a lie since the only thing they seemed to have done was install a bunch of bloatware and the Norton virus. <laughs> Norton virus. They claimed to have fixed the issue, which was definitely a lie since it wouldn't boot at all when I got it back from them. I reseated the RAM, CPU, and GPU and it returned to failing to boot randomly. All they did was install crap and scratch up my case. Obviously, I need help. Please? This here is that viewer's broken gaming PC. We're gonna have to do a fixer flop episode on this camera. So it sounds as though this rig has been through a heck of a lot. It's still quite dirty, which apparently Geek Squad was supposed to fix for them. That uh, doesn't look to be the case at all. And it's arguably in worse shape now than it was before Geek Squad got their hands on it because it was at least intermittently powering on and posting and loading into Windows before. Whereas when the owner got it back, again, according to him, the rig was not powering on at all and only after he started kind of unplugging things and reconnecting them did he finally get some sign of life back from it. My goal is just to get this thing back up and running. I'm gonna try my best. Intermittent issues can be difficult to diagnose, to troubleshoot, to narrow down, to, to, to remedy, but we're, we're gonna try. I hope it's not a flop, but if it is, hopefully you'll be here for the ride. Are you ready? Stay with me. Thermal Grizzly Cryo Sheets are excellent substitutes for traditional thermal paste thanks to their graphene construction and extremely high thermal conductivity, making them more effective than traditional carbonot thermal pads. They're super easy to install, never dry out, and can be purchased in various sizes, ranging from 24 by 12 millimeters all the way up to 50 by 50. In theory, you never have to change one of these, making them peace of mind for servers, gaming PCs, and even high-end workstations. And best of all, no mess. Just keep in mind that these are electrically conductive so be sure to use them as directed. Check out Thermal Grizzly's cryo sheets via the links below for your CPU or GPU today. Hey there, my name's Greg and welcome to Fixer Flop. In this playlist, we attempt to fix viewer systems in and around the Orlando, Florida area for free. So we charge nothing at all for the service of just, you know, troubleshooting itself. We also do not charge for replacement hardware and that's thanks in large part to your viewership. We make money on the back end here by uploading these videos to sites like YouTube and your viewership is uh, is what allows us to continue doing that. So if we weren't making money, there's no way we could offer this as a free service. We're not doing this necessarily to the kindness of our own hearts. Um, some of you seem to think that we do. And while that is flattering, I have to be just brutally honest. I mean, the only way we're able to do this is because of YouTube, because of our brand partners, and all of that is essentially propped up by your viewership. So again, thank you so much for that. I do wanna go over briefly the specs in case you are curious. So it looks like this rig is running a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, which is an excellent gaming CPU, an MSI B650i Edge. It's got a big old Noctua cooler in there, Corsair Vengeance DDR5, 32 gigs in total, and an MSI 3080 Ti. And one thing I noticed right away, he's got rubber bands kind of just holding these two fans against the heat sink uh, here for the CPU cooler. And while it does look a bit sketchy, they actually don't interfere at all with the fan spinning. So that's a good thing. Uh, if I had some of the little wireframe mounts to get these you know, actually fastened correctly, I would give them to them. I just don't have any. I, I don't save stuff like that. Uh, but I just wanted to point that out right away because I'm sure some of you are wondering what the heck these are. They're actually pretty functional. The other thing you'll notice is how dusty this system is, which apparently was supposed to be fixed by Geek Squad. Uh, it very clearly has it. It doesn't look like they've even taken like, a can of air to this thing. It is just caked in all the right places. And uh, so maybe we can do something about that, assuming we can get the system back up and running again in this video. We're going to try for a post, although it sounds like we likely won't get one, but it's important that we have this starting point. Right, so I don't know if you just saw that. There's a truck that just drove by outside, so it was a little loud. The system powered on for about a split second and then turned right back off again. Uh, that's that's an odd one, but I'm, I'm actually from a troubleshooter's perspective, I'm really happy that it's doing this. This is repeatable, so far reliable, and means that we have something to actually hone in on. Because if it just powered up and loaded into Windows, I mean, what can I really fix? Yeah, now it's not powering on at all. This is pretty wild. Ooh, uh, first impressions, power supply. 
I'm definitely gonna focus on that. Uh, second thing is gonna be wiring, make sure that all of our cables are connected where they should be, and uh, we can go from there. First order of business, I'm going to confirm that cables are run where they should be, that everything's connected properly, especially around the front IO area. I've seen some really weird things when that's miswired. Now to make getting to the front IO a bit easier, I'm going to remove the graphics card. It's a bit crammed in here. It's a small ITX build. Uh, but while we do this, we can also take the time to roll out the graphics card as a potential failure point by powering the system on without it in there. If I can find the, <sighs> there's like a, Jeez, everything is just wedged back here. 12 seconds later. And uh, yeah, so if the system still gives us the same symptoms that we saw earlier, then we know that the graphics card is not to blame. You can see you had to fashion this like aftermarket cooler assembly to the uh, underside of this graphics card to make it fit in the fractal case that he's using. This board conveniently, or rather inconveniently, has its JFP1 front panel header just above the 16 lane PCI slot here, off to the bottom left, which is usually where you'll find your HD audio. That's the this connector here. So it uh, looks like as it was, it was actually where it should have been. Yeah, it looks like this cable is actually an extension. You can see the reset switch on the left, which runs into the header, is connected to the correct cable running from the case. Same for power switch and same for power LED. Try powering on again here, uh, effectively bypassing the power switch just in case. But I think we are probably a-okay here. So right there, those two pins. Looks like it's powered on now. It's running for a bit longer than it was before as well. Well, this is weird. Hopefully it wasn't the graphics card. Um, we could try putting that back in and then manually jumping front panel again. Now remember, the CPU in here is a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. That definitely has integrated graphics, and uh, I wanna see if we can get picture out from that chip with our monitor connected. So we're gonna try uh, powering on again. There we go. This also give us a chance to see if we can, you know, repeat the power on cycle without it failing on us the second or third time. And uh, would you look at that? It seems to want to post. There it is. All right, and it's loading into Windows 11. I'm a bit worried at this point. I know this seems a bit out there, but I've actually got a hold of a proper GT1030 this time around for fix or flop troubleshooting. Now we're gonna throw this in place of that 3080 Ti. I think it's a 3080 Ti that's in his rig currently. And if we can get picture out through this, but not through his card, then it looks like his card might be cooked. Fun fact about this card, I actually got it from Freddy of the Tavarish YouTube channel. I'm sure many of you are familiar with his work. He's currently rebuilding that flooded McLaren P1. He had an older system that had this uh, 1030 just laying in it. And I said, you know what? This would make for a pretty sweet troubleshooting card. And in an unfortunate turn of events, it looks like the system now works with that tiny little 1030 in there, which tells me that uh, it's probably Probably this bad boy right here. Now, we can't say still for certain that it is the card and not these, because uh, notably, the 1030 doesn't need supplemental PCI power cables. Who would have thought? So we still have one more thing to narrow down. Will this graphics card work in a totally separate known working system? I've got it just kind of assembled here, makeshift on the side. We're gonna power it on at the rear. Really hoping that this works. That would mean we likely have an issue with the original power supply. Would you look at that? It does at least power on. So that's a good start. We're just hoping for some sort of post. Come on, give me something. Oh, there it is. It was power cycling a few times. It was just training memory. It's a new stick that I don't usually use here. But uh, that's it. That's a post. The card seems fine. Nothing like crazy hot on the card either. Uh, nothing I would deem uh, concerning, at least right out of the gate. So that's good. I guess now we turn our attention to the power supply, and in particular, those supplemental eight pins. This might seem a bit reckless on the surface, but I've got this GTX 1074, the win here has been sitting in a box for a good while. It has two supplemental eight pins, just like our 3080 Ti over there. And I wanna see if we can replicate the issue. I'm not as concerned about losing this card since it's older, it's a lot cheaper now, but uh, if we can, get the system to either not power on or power on for a split second and then turn back off, 
then I'm gonna take the power supply out and run it through my tester. So in she goes. Again, it's all a bit tight in here, but I like compact builds. I don't blame the owner for wanting something like this already installed. And then we'll get these two eight pins connected. We've got a lot of stuff on this table already, so I'm just gonna slide things ooh, carefully this way. I'm gonna pull the power cable from that power supply. Move it over here. This is the stuff you guys normally don't see on camera since it's just messy all around. HDMI cable coming with me over here. Where's the HDMI port? There it is. All right. So uh, here we go. Make sure that card's slotted in all the way. And power on back here. Power on up front. Now, if this does work, <laughs> I'm not really going to know what to do. All right, here we go. Whoa. <sighs> All right, it's time to take a step back here. Let's walk through what we've already done. We've proven that the original card works in a different system. That is not to blame. We've proven that a separate known working card works in the original system. That is not to blame. We have not yet verified that the power supply is A-OK, -okay, at least according to our tester, so that's gonna be the first thing we do uh, up next. There's a string hanging in front of the lens. But then after that, assuming that that power supply is OK, and I imagine it is, maybe front panel. Because we sort of just ruled it out we just disconnected it and I've been jumping ever since. There was one loose cable though, and I think it was the hard drive LED cable. That was still wired technically to the board, even though it's not, you know, th that circuit is not closed because it's not connected to front panel. That, that, that case doesn't have a hard drive LED. It could still possibly be shorting on say the motherboard or maybe the graphics card backplate. Something to look into. Maybe we can replicate the issue by just I don't know, manipulating that. So I'm talking about this cable right here for hard drive LED. Now, the entire connector is not a factor now. It's not connected to the board. There's nothing sending power over this from the case side. So it's kind of just chilling here. You know, we could short this against the, uh, you know, back plate. Nothing, nothing's gonna happen there. But when it was connected, when, when this was connected to the motherboard, this one went unconnected because again, the case doesn't support a hard drive LED, but if we just shorted it like so, for example, it's possible that the motherboard sees that and thinks, well, that, that's not good. Power's going where it shouldn't. Let's shut off. So I'm, I'm curious. I actually wanna try this first before testing the power supply. Let's see if we can replicate it. All right, so now this is gonna be a pretty chaotic shot. I do apologize in advance. I'm gonna show you just the corner of the screen here. So if we do get a post, you'll notice something over here. I'm going to connect the HDMI cable to the card again. And this time we're going to mess with that hard drive LED pin set. So power on, I'm gonna try powering on with the case power button. Alrighty, so far so good. All right, so uh, that looks good now. Now I'm, I'm <laughs> this is going to be really cringy. I'm going to do it. Let's see. Nope. Nothing. Okay, well, I thought it would do something, but it's not. So that's not to blame. Okay, so then what is? You know, I've got to say, I've been tinkering with this off camera for about 15, 20 minutes or so, and... Uh, I've swapped his card back in. I've rewired everything. I only had a few things disconnected. Front panel, obviously, to start. I had the USB 3.0 cable disconnected because it was in the way. Uh, and same goes for an RGB cable. But everything is literally back to the way it was. We've come full circle, and now the rig powers on consistently. The power supply checks out in our tester. No issues here at all, looking very healthy. We know for certain the card works in our makeshift test bench. Repeatedly, it powers on without issue. And we prove that other graphics cards work just fine in here, including ones that rely on supplemental power, similar to the config we have with the original card. I, I, I really don't know what to do. It, it fires up instantly now. Every single time I've tried it, including off camera, which has been about half a dozen times or so, it loads into Windows every single time. 
Other than the dust, I don't know what else I can fix here. If Geek Squad was seeing the exact same thing I am here, I would have returned it exactly the same way. I mean, minus the scratches, obviously, but there's nothing really for me to do here. I can't fix what I can't see, and there's nothing really to fix here, as far as I can tell. I can't replicate the issue because I don't, I'm not even sure what I did to fix the issue. I just removed the card and put it back in, essentially. And now everything's hunky-dory. <laughs> it still turns on. This is, this is it. This is all I can do. Uh, I always try my best in these episodes to kind of give you a takeaway. Something like, oh, you know, don't miswire your front I.O. or don't let this cable short here or always check to make sure your graphics card's installed correctly, etc., etc. I can't give you anything like that here because I still don't know what I did to fix it. Now again, he did mention in his original listing that the original problem was that the system would power on intermittently. Sometimes he would push the power button, he'd get no reaction at all, and sometimes it would turn on and quickly turn back off, and other times it would load into Windows perfectly fine. I'm trying my best to get it to falter, and it will not at this point. All I can think of was there was a short somewhere, some cable was being snagged, not plugged in all the way. Again, maybe those fans in the graphics card, those cables were getting snagged more specifically. Uh, maybe front panel just was kind of hanging halfway out and I just couldn't tell because everything again is so tight in there. That's really the best I can offer at this point, but hey, at least it works again. I, I mean, we tested everything that is, is you know, relevant to the system not powering, at least from what we could see, out of the case, the graphics card, the power supply looks good, wiring looks good, I got nothing else. I'm becoming repetitious at this point because I just, I'm kind of still in shock that it's working. <laughs> but it is what it is. Thank you so much for watching, and again, I'm very sorry for the ending of this one. I suppose it's still a fix, technically, even though I don't know how we fixed it, but it is a flop in the sense that there's, there's nothing really to take away from this one. Maybe just reseating components, checking that your cables are wired correctly and not being smushed and chopped off by other things around your rig. Uh, that's the, the, the one thing I would stress here. But uh, other than that, we clean this thing up, have her back to her owner in no time. If you guys enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing, that's that red button. If you haven't already, turn that bell on so that you get notifications when videos like these go live. And uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about this one and what you're looking forward to seeing next on the channel. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.